What's good, YouTube? It's your boy CJ with another video. It's been a long time since I made a video, but I'll just say this kind of like a life update, a story I've been wanting to tell for like three years. I ain't gonna fake it. It ain't even been three years since like what happened has happened. This kind of gonna be like a story time and my closing out point with the whole football chapter shit and all that. This video gonna be about why I dropped out of college as a D1 athlete and I was on scholarship on top of that. I'll just kind of get y'all a rundown of like the whole backstory or kind of my backstory with playing sports and all that shit. Oh, uh, I grew up in like one of them sports families we always doing some run track basketball swimming and i'm gonna try and make this video as quick as i can but it's probably not gonna be quick because i'm actually just gonna tell the full story so i don't gotta ever answer this shit again i could just refer people back to this video if y'all know what i'm saying yeah my whole starting thing is like i grew up in a family where everybody plays sports ain't nobody i was the first one i guess to make it as far as i did and keep going with you know the whole playing sports thing grew up playing basketball all of this time I was playing basketball. I ended up going to Chaminade uh, freshman year of high school. If y'all know what Chaminade is, it's a private school in St. Louis. I think it's one in Hawaii too. But yeah, I ended up playing basketball there. Went to school with Jason Tatum and all of them folks. Long story short with that, I'm like, damn, I'm not 6'3". I'm not, I'm not 6'3 at the time, but I'm not 6'8", 6'9", 7 foot. They really hooping out here. I just decided like I'm going to play football. And mind you, growing up, I hated playing football, bro. Like I hated that shit with a passion bro i played on youth city bro i had to walk to practice and shit once i got to chaminade i started playing football or whatever i'm like damn i'm taller i'm faster everything and everybody like i got this shit watch i got it. i running with it from there play freshman i think because i ain't no shit about football honestly so i started playing freshman my freshman year i scored every single game at chaminade we played then my sophomore year i ended up transferring to parkway north and when i went to parkway north i think because of my transfer. Y'all know how that shit go if you end up transferring or whatever. I went to Parkway North, had to play JV for like the rest, the remainder of the season because I came in the middle of football season. Played that shit. I was balling on JV or whatever. My next year, my junior year, I go up to varsity. Like I even pop it up on the screen right here. Number three all time or something like that for most yards per catch. I think I'm third all time in the state. Like I think I'm just over Jeremy Macklin shit, all that. I took that shit and ran with it. I had two um, other big D one players on my team michael thompson jelani williams we all was like a trio really going crazy receiver safety and i think mike was d lineman at the time this kind of you know we fast forward past high school you know playing high school ball everything was cool like that i ended up going to college so i committed to mizzou i had i think 14 and 15 d1 offers i committed to mizzou and so once i committed to mizzou you know they do the in-house visits and all that shit like that your family cook for everybody everything you think everything cool so my first I think it was my third day at Mizzou. We had a meeting. Receivers coach called us in for a meeting. Coach O'Fadale called us in for a meeting. Yeah, um, I just want to let y'all know I'm going to tight ends. Like, it's been a real process with y'all boys and all X, Y, and Z. Like, you know, they bringing a new receivers coach in. So I'm like, damn, like... I really came here because, like, one, is close to home, everything like that. Two, is SEC. SEC ball different. And three, like... Coach Ophadale is my dog, bro, like, and everything's just going solid then. So for me to get there and be like, oh, he's transferring to um, coach the tight ends, it's like, damn. So now we got to wait on a new receiver coach. Long story short with that, the new receiver coach come in. I ain't going to keep naming a bunch of coaches' names unless, like, the shit really is something that needs to be naming their names about. But... Uh, the next coach come in. He cool. Like, everything going solid. Everything going good. I'm under, this is under all, under Coach Odom. Class of 2019, I graduated early. Got there to Mizzou, class of 2019 in January. Everything going solid. Like, practice going normal. You know, SEC's like, and I think just college football in general, if you not just one of them guys, like, out of high school, you probably gonna sit for a little bit, which I understood the whole politics shit with that. So, I wasn't really... Like, I wasn't really tripping about none of that shit going on because it is what it is. Like, it got to do, you know, you got to let the process be a process. You coming out of high school, you got to develop and shit like that. You know, that year goes by, and I want to say my next year, Coach Odom and them got fired. Like, damn, everything restarting all over again. Kind of don't know my place, but I'm like, bro, I'm not finna transfer because they t teach you that when you coming up in, like, the recruiting process. Don't go to school strictly for the coaches. 
And as y'all see off my first two intakes, y'all know why. The new coaches come in. This is under Coach Drinkwitz staff. And cool or whatever, Coach Drinkwitz is kind of like, you know, he's just like a super upbeat guy at the time. Like, everything's cool. Everything's solid. So practice start going by. I'm a wide receiver. They bring in two graduate transfer wide receivers. So it's like, damn, like, I'm not even going to get the chance because, shit, he just getting here. So he's trying to make an impact off rips. So he not going to. You know, put the young bulls in, really. That's why he brought the two grad transfers in, mind you. Which, I got made one of my best friends as them grad transfers. D. Hayes, bro, play for the Texas now, bro, like my big brother. Like, for real. They come in, the season going by, season going by, etc. I want to say, yeah, this is his first year. So, uh, he just kind of one of them coaches that's like, he, won, he good at recruiting. Do not get me wrong, he good at recruiting. He got him just one of them coaches want everybody to like him and shit like that, which at the beginning is no issue with that. Like, I don't have no problem. We get to, I think, summertime. Summertime, it's like the 4th of July. I'm driving to the Lake of the Ozarks. Um, I went to the Lake of the Ozarks. I ain't going to really say what all happened, but some little petty situation happened. And I ended up calling Coach Drinkwitz, let him know, like, hey, such and such happened. Uh, how, how am I supposed to go about this? How am I supposed to handle it? And it ain't nothing, like, crazy, like, not no bullshit like that. He's like, man, don't worry about it. Like, enjoy your 4th of July. We'll deal with it when we get back home. So I get back um, to Columbia. And when I get back to Columbia, uh, I got to do, like, community service hours for what had happened, which was honestly some racial shit. And if y'all want to know about that story later on, I can make that a completely different video. But that's what that shit was. He's like, we're going to deal with it when we get to um, Columbia. So we get to Columbia. Mind you, we practice early, like 3 a.m. Uh, not 3 a.m., but we practice in the morning. And in the morning, we go to class. We got class all day. Like, we do lifting and shit in the morning. Then we got class all day. And then we practice from like 3 to like 6 p.m. So me having to do community service, I'm like, okay, I don't got time to really do that shit at all. And so that's when they place that little thing in, like you can opt out and shit like that. So I made it clear, like I'm opting out just so I can knock this community service shit out because I don't have time. And he keep calling, 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 like all our athletic people, like how many hours did CJ finish today? How many hours did CJ... So cool. I feel like me being an adult, I'm finna handle that shit instead of like playing around and bullshitting with the whole situation. I do the community service or whatever because I don't have no time to do it. I feel like I'm being an adult. I'm gonna handle it X, Y, and Z. So I knock that shit out in like a week. Knock that shit out in like a week. I call um, my wide receivers coach at the time. I'm not gonna name his name because it's not even like it is what it is. This shit happened, what, a year or two ago, I think. But. Not going to name who it is. And I call him. I'm like, yo, coach, uh, I'm ready to come back, blah, blah, blah. I'm not really tripping about, like, playing time or nothing like that. I'm just trying to be with my teammates, work out, eat with my team, like, X, Y, and Z. He don't hit me. No, I text him that. And then he ain't hit me back till, like, the next day. No, I'm getting that wrong. So I text Coach Drinkwitz first. And I told him, like, yo, coach, I'm ready to come back. Like, I just want to be with my teammates, X, Y, and Z. He don't pick up and answer the phone or he don't respond to my text. All right, cool. Next day come up, I text my receivers coach at the time. And I'm like, all right, uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to come back, trying to be with my team. I'm not worried about playing time. I don't really care about me getting in the game X, Y, and Z. I just want to be around why I got brought here. Like, that's the reason I'm here. So um, he's like, yeah, just give me a minute. I've been in meetings all day. I'm going to call you back tomorrow. I'm like, damn, okay, uh, all right. So tomorrow come, and this is, I called him on a Wednesday. He called me back on Thursday. So on a Thursday, he like, yeah, man, uh, blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't know how that conversation went between you and Coach Drinkwitz um, when you opted out. And mind you, the conversation that me and Coach Drinkwitz had when I opted out, I walked in this office. I like, bro, I swear I remember this shit like yesterday. This whole story, I remember everything. I walk in the office, and then I'm like, um, yo, Coach Drink was like, I know you want me to knock out all this community service. I'm going to opt out, like, so I can knock all this shit out. He's like, are you sure you want to do that? I'm like, yeah, I just think it's the best option for me to get done what I need to get done with. He's like, all right, he read what's on the little opt-out sheet. That, I do not remember what was on the sheet, but he read what's on the opt-out sheet. And then he's like, shit, you sign right here, and I mean, that's pretty much it. 
So I sign it. There's no like bad blood that I'm thinking of, bad tension on my end, or you can hear like it being hateful in somebody's voice or somebody upset with X, Y, and Z. Like, so it's cool. After that, that's how that conversation went. It wasn't nothing serious. So when the coach on the phone, like, yeah, I don't know how that conversation went between you and Coach Drinkwitz, I'm like, what you mean? Like the conversation didn't go like nothing. He he signed. I he was like, "Are you good with what's on this sheet?" He read out to me who's on the sheet. I signed the paper and left his office, and that was just that. And he was like, "Um, I mean, yeah, you know, give him a call, like call him, and because I don't know like how that conversation went." So I'm like, "All right, hang up the phone." So when I hang up the phone, I look on Twitter, bro. That's the craziest part, bro. I look on Twitter because he didn't answer the phone. And bro, unfollow me on Twitter. Hey, coach, unfollow me on Twitter. So you can follow me on Twitter, but you can't call You can't call my phone like at all. You won't answer none of my calls, nothing. It ain't like I did some crazy, outrageous shit to hurt anybody. Like, that, if anything, it's just myself. Like, that, what that issue was. And I told you before I even made the decision I made, what I was going to do. So if you felt some type of way about that, you should have been my head coach and basically your parent that you signed your life to for the next four years. Let me know what's up and we'll have that shit squared away. If you didn't agree with it, I wasn't going to do that shit. Once everything happened, I called Coach Drinkwitz. Don't answer the phone. He unfollowed me on Twitter. I call him again. Don't answer the phone. Call him and text him again. He's not responding to my text. He's not answering no phone calls. But... I'm hanging out with my teammates. Like, come on now. I'm in college. I came here to be on the football team. So I'm finna hang with my teammates. Them the people I be around this whole time since I've been here. I'm watching him call them, text them about classes and being on time to X, Y, and Z, about lifts, about just whatever your head coach gonna text anybody about. Texting you about new plays, new X, Y, and Z. So I'm like, damn, like, he won't even respond to nothing. Like, Bro, I already know what that means. And mind you, a bunch of our teammates been leaving already because of... I can't tell you what it's because, but... Shit, everybody leaving already. So it's like... Something going on around here. And I don't know if he just trying to fish out people who leaving or X, Y, and Z. And so one of my teammates like, yeah, bro, we just had a meeting today. Coach, Coach Drink was in the meeting basically like, um... Yeah, if you opt out, you might as well enter the transfer portal. Like, you're going to be done here. And I'm just like, damn. Like, I didn't enter the transfer. I mean, I didn't opt out because I wanted to opt out. Like, I needed to handle my business so everything's in good sitting with everything. Like, we don't have to worry about shit no more. I'm being grown about the situation. I fucked up, so I'm handling my shit. And that ain't even, like, fucked up. And I ain't going to lie. Now that I'm saying it, I'm going to drop a real story time on this whole thing because... That story, not even what it could, as bad as it could be sounding like. So when I tell y'all, y'all gonna be like, damn, really? But yeah, he telling me that, like, yeah, coach basically saying in the meeting, like, if you thinking about entering or opting out, you might as well enter the transfer portal. You're gonna be done here. So I'm like, but this man not answering none of my calls, bro. Like, that's the shit that had made me mad this whole time. Cause I'm like, bro, you a grown ass man, bro. Like, you grown. Call my phone, call me back. You see, I keep calling you. Ain't no way you missing all these calls. So that's just like my standpoint for once. I don't even want to be under you as no, yo, a player for you, bro. Cause that's just telling how you move and you not right. You shysty, bro. Like you going to go talk behind my back. And I'm not saying I'm the only one that opted out. Cause we had a handful of us that did, but you telling, you won't even hit me back, but you telling everybody on the team they might as well leave and X, Y, and Z if they enter the trip or opt out. I'm like, damn, I didn't, I waited like a week or two trying to get in contact with that man, bro. Didn't hear shit. Don't hear shit. Don't hear shit. So I'm like, bro, I'm talking to my boy, like, bro, I ain't gonna lie. Like, I'm not trying to leave this bitch at all. Like, I didn't come here to just be leaving at all. But I'm finna enter the transfer portal, bro. Like, it ain't shit I can do. Like, I don't know how I can get back into doing anything. Like, I don't know what to do. And mind you, you know, once you get to college, they don't really tell you shit about nothing, bro. Besides, they going to give you your list of classes. You're going to take your ass to class. You're going to take your ass to lifts and practice. Study your plays. And it is what it is. That chapter kind of end out. I'm like, I basically get forced to enter the transfer portal. 
So I entered a transfer portal and that shit is already like, bro, I didn't want to do this shit anyway. So long story short, me in the transfer portal for y'all know how that process go. It's basically recruiting and shit all over again. Yeah, bro, my camera got, like, hot, bro. I ain't gonna fake it. It's, like, hot as fuck in St. Louis, like, 90-something, 100s. It's been in the 90s and 100s for hellas. But, yeah, so, basically get forced to enter a transfer portal. So, you know how that process goes. It's basically recruiting and shit all over again, which I'm not trying to deal with that shit again. It was annoying in high school, bro, and it's annoying now. But I got to get somewhere because I'm trying to make this shit happen, make this shit shake. So... I ended up getting calls, calls, calls. I was about to commit to Ohio University because one of their receivers, one of their receivers had went to Jackson State, so they was looking for a receiver. So I was finna go there all the way up until, and I think, and I think they pay or something like that. The stipend check you get it was like semesterly or something like that, which I mean, it is what it is. If that's what my options was, I'm going to take it and make the most of that shit. Me being me, I've been having to support myself since I was 18. When I graduated um, high school and left early, it was on me from that point. Like, and I ain't mad at that shit because that's how I am where I am today. Like I made myself who I am today. I get a call from New Mexico, University of New Mexico. And they like, yeah, like, we really trying to make some change here, blah, blah, blah. We going to do, um, what did they say? Oh, we going to be running a spread offense. <laughs> we going to be, <laughs> y'all going to see why I'm laughing later on. But they like, we going to do a spread offense. We gonna, we've been looking for, you know, a number one guy, blah, blah, blah. You know, same shit every school going to tell you. So I'm like, cool, et cetera, et cetera. Um, he's like, when were you make looking to make a decision? I was like, honestly, I was finna commit tomorrow, but like, um, yeah, I, I'm just trying to, you know, figure this all out right now. So he like, all right, well, man, um, if you want, you know, want to come here or whatever, it's kind of a quick process if we, so we can get you in now, like, so you don't have to wait at all. And I'm like, all right, cool. Um, that's fine. Like, let me see what I'm going to do. And mind you, I had the offer from New Mexico in high school, but I thought my offer from New Mexico in high school was in Mexico, Missouri. So I'm like, bro, hell no, nah. I'm not finna go there, bro. Like, hell no, nah. Mexico, Missouri, no. So, um, yeah, I end up committing there, and once I committed to New Mexico, that's I committed the next day, like in the morning. I'm like, he's like, yeah, we could really use you here by I think like Monday. I think it was, yeah, cause it was it was Thursday. It was Thursday when I was about to commit. He's like, we could really use you here by, like, Monday. And I'm like, shit, I'll be down there tomorrow. Like, I'll make that happen. Mind you, New Mexico is in it's New Mexico. The school is in Albuquerque, University of New Mexico. So I drive from Mizzou. Like, I'll literally pack my shit up in, like, two days. Because I'm not finna try and stay where I'm not wanted and shit at all. So I already knew what it was going to be. Um, so I packed my shit up. I get my dog, bro, everything. Hop in the car, drive 15 hours, bro. I stopped in Tulsa uh, with my boy, Ant. My boy, Ant, took me in for a night and shit. So um, I ain't have to drive straight through. That's kind of like a halfway-ish kind of mark. So I take that, sleep over there, wake up in the morning, keep on driving, driving, driving. I get down to New Mexico. I'm like, damn, like, this shit crazy. I ain't never seen no mountains everywhere. Like, that shit crazy to me. So I'm geek, but the whole time I'm driving, bro, I'm just crying and shit because it's just like, damn, bro. Like, I didn't want to have to do that shit, bro, at all. Like, and I didn't even get a chance to even talk to that man, bro. Like, and I just couldn't fuck with, bro. I couldn't fuck with Mizzou. I couldn't fuck with nothing after that, bro. Like, that got ties to Mizzou besides my teammates and my friends and shit that I done met along the way of me being there. So, um, I get down to New Mexico you know, everything's solid at first. Once you, know, first move in, it's like, damn, especially from the Midwest like me, that's damn near, like, it's not the West Coast, but it's damn near the West Coast if you from somebody like me from out here. I get down there, everything going solid, everything going smooth, practice going smooth and shit like that. And um, I ended up having had surgery on my finger. Like, my fucking uh, pinky, my shit don't even bend no more. It's a screw in there because I broke it my junior year of high school and I never got it fixed till I got to Mizzou or till I got to New Mexico. So they fixed my shit. Um, and it was going decent, like shit like that. 
and we got Terry Wilson. Terry Wilson came in for Kentucky. We was like, all right, so shit, we gonna have a squad. Like, okay. And outside of like the on field shit, it just kind of, and this is why I'm saying I'm trying to make this shit not so long because I know there's gonna be a long ass video, but I get to New Mexico and it's not like what, long story short, it's not what they saying that shit is gonna be. So we got like eight quarterbacks. Y'all, y'all tell me in school y'all know got eight QBs. Mind you, I'm grateful as fuck for the opportunity, but I'm off the shit now, so I can talk about it. So we got eight quarterbacks. Every QB, like, that season start getting hurt. Everybody start getting hurt. Everybody start getting hurt. Straight training. We had, I ain't gonna lie, I fucked with, fucked with him kind of, sort of, as a person, bro, but that shit was just not right. Like, how the coaches be talking to people, how the strength coaches be talking to people. It's just like, bro... Y'all are tripping. Like, I'll tell you the story when I first got in there. We lifting the first day. And my dog, like, I don't, I don't want to say bro name, but my dog in there lifting. We doing, like, max out fucking little squat thing. Max out squats. But it's not, like, no heavy ass weight. You just doing that shit as many times as you can with, like, a 25 on a bar or some shit. That nigga get to, like, 100-something or 90-something. Ain't nobody even seen 90. So I'm like, let's go, bro. Let's go. Like, Feel that shit, and I ain't gonna lie, bro's a walk on and shit, bro. So he really feeling that shit. Like these niggas got me fucked up. So I'm with that. Like, nigga, I didn't came from a struggle too, bro. So I feel you. Uh, the strength coach come over there and shit. He's like, um, you're not going low enough. You're not going low enough. You're not going low enough. I'm like, bro, don't come over here with all that hating shit, bro. Like laughing and shit, cause that's the type of shit we could do at Mizzou. Our strength coach was cool as fuck. So he like, um, shut the fuck up. I'm like, nigga, what the fuck? I said, nigga, you shut the fuck up. Like, what do you mean? And then he's like, uh, just looking around shit, bro. I swear the whole, like, whole everything got quiet. But it's just like, bro, I'm not no disrespectful ass kid, bro. So don't be trying to disrespect me in here or some shit because I'm new. Like, bro, get off that. I ain't even say no crazy shit to you, nothing. Like, what you mean? And then, um, so that shit happened. I had, like, a 5 a.m. for, like, weeks and shit. I can get into that story again, too. But, so long story short with that, it's not what they said it was going to be. We start running triple option, bro. We the only school that's running triple option, like, that I even fucking know of. Like, it's crazy. Receivers are just out there blocking, hitting fucking safeties across the field, hitting blocking corners all game. Like, bro, this is not what y'all told me this was going to be, bro. And, um, I ain't gonna lie, like, I promise you, I love, I love my teammates, bro. I even appreciated my coaches after everything was what it was, but it's just, like, this shit not, it's not fulfilling. Like, this shit not gonna be it, bro. I'm, I, it's, I'm not seeing what, what it's gonna be. So, um, after that all happened, I'm just like, bro, this is not gonna work. Everybody started leaving. My boy T, he went back, he did his draft shit back at, his old school like that's how bad it was and we went three and nine like pieces just wasn't falling together schemes wasn't working and shit and it's been like that there for a minute like but i'm thinking we finna change that shit and make shit happen and me being me like if you recruiting me i'm a deep threat like throw that bitch deep and i got you like nobody's running with me and it's been like that and my tape says that from high school it said that yeah that shit just didn't really work out so i started i was in july i made my brand like clothing brand and shit and my sales doing good numbers doing good all type of shit like that that shit just was like kind of taking off and i've been into fashion been into being a creative all that shit like if you've been following me for a minute you know that so um yeah, we leaving practice, and this was like the icing on the cake, because I'm not trying to keep harping on this story for way longer, but this was the icing on the cake with this shit. Um, we leaving practice one day. Mind you, I know my fucking plays. I know what I'm doing, like X, Y, and Z. So I had uh, offensive coordinator telling everybody, like, hey, make sure everybody watching film, like, learn y'all plays, learn your concepts, you don't know your shit, you can't get in. Like, real shit, though. So uh, I'm, like, playing around and shit because I know after we leaving, though, like, not while we sitting in the huddle or whatever at the end of practice talking, like, while we walking off the field and shit. He just telling everybody again, like, reiterating it. Make sure y'all know y'all shit. So I'm like, Coach, I got you. Like, I know my shit. Da, da, da. He's like, bullshit. And to him, it's a joke. But if y'all knew our offensive coordinator, that motherfucker's militant, bro. Like, he, he don't crack smiles for shit for real, bro. So he like, um... 
I'm like, Coach, I got it. I'm going I'm to check my shit. I'm going to watch my plays, blah, blah, blah. He be like, you're not doing nothing, blah, blah, blah. You too busy selling T-shirts. And that shit kind of like, maybe it shouldn't have hit me how it hit me, but it did. So I'm like, what you mean? Like, that's another source of income for me. Like, I can't keep living off. I'll get into that later. But I'm like, what you mean? That's another source of income, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, ain't nobody buying that shit. So I'm like, is this motherfucker hating, bro? Like, for real? Because we getting our ass beat every fucking game? Because we out, we can't throw the fucking ball nowhere? He ain't no me. I said, bro, I can show you the numbers right now if I want to. And, nigga, my numbers are good for my brand when I first started my shit. So, even now, like, it's still doing good. And I done rebranded twice, bro. So, I'm like, I can show you the numbers, blah, blah, blah. And then he had said something, like, under his breath again or whatever. But that shit was like the icing on the cake. Because that just show you, bro, like, nigga, they are really just here because... They want you to make money for them. They do not give a fuck about your future outside of this shit, bro. Do not let these motherfuckers fool you, bro. They don't. Unless, I mean, I done only been to two schools. I can't speak for every school, but they don't care, bro. After that shit, you get hurt, you get injured, anything like that is next man up, which that's just the business side of this shit. But it's like, once you get hurt, don't nobody give a fuck about you no more. It just is crazy to be, bro, because I would have never thought that's how this shit went, like, at all, that college football was going to be anything like this. So, um, I think January came up, bro. January come up. No, it wasn't January. If season ended, I'm like, bro, I'm fucking leaving when this shit over with. Like, that's how bad it was. Ask anybody on that team, bro, like... And I know I'm not trying to even throw niggas under the bus. That's why I ain't said no players' names or went into real detail about this story. I'm just giving y'all a gist of all this shit. But, I'm like, they don't care, bro. Like, we... Bro, this is a lot of crazy-ass shit, bro. I'm going to start doing story times if y'all want them, bro. Because it's hella stories, bro. That'll even connect this shit more once you look back at it. But, I'm like, bro, I'm leaving, shit, bro. Like, one of my boys from... He came with me. He's like, bro, I'm leaving. Like, everybody just starting to dip or whatever because this shit, nigga, sold us a lie, bro. Like, y'all sold us some bullshit. And I live in New Mexico, bro. I'm from here. I'm from St. Louis, bro. There's no black people out there. There's no food out there. I don't have no problem with Hispanic people or white people, but it's just like, bro, I don't see nobody like myself ever. Not once. If they don't play sports, I'm not going to see them. Food options. Niggas eating Chick-fil-A every day. Like, now, I, bro, I fucking hate Chick-fil-A. That shit hits a gag reflex when I eat that shit now. It's a bad area. It's a bad area, bro. Nigga, I live in Albuquerque, New Mexico, bro. Like, go look that shit up. That's Cartel City, bro. And all type of bullshit be going on. You can't even go enjoy yourself out there, bro. You have to sit in confinement in your room or some bullshit can really happen. Because... They not playing out there. And that's me saying that from St. Louis, bro. Y'all know how this shit go. End up leaving. I'm like, bro, I'm just going to dip. And shit, December hit. It was December 15th, bro. I jumped on the road and I'm just like, bro, I'm going to fuck home, bro. Like, this shit over with. Like, I'm done with this shit. Get in the car. Get to driving, bro. Driving. Stopped in Tulsa again when I was driving. For my nigga aunt took me in one more time. Mind you, I got my dog and everything both times. So, shout out to my boy, bro, Solid. But all that shit going on, I'm just like, all right, bro, I'm going home. I get back to St. Louis. I'm like, bro, this shit's it. Like, I'll try and go somewhere else. But honestly, I don't have no passion or love for this shit no more, bro. Like, this shit fucked up. And I'm finna make my own way with this shit. So, that's really the gist of, like, the whole story behind me dropping out and shit like that. Um, and I'll just say this, like... I was the one at my every school I go to that be preaching to everybody like, bro, this shit is not the end game. This is not the end game, bro. Like, if you don't go to the league, and I'm talking to seniors and shit as a young nigga at Mizzou, bro, so and New Mexico. So I'm telling niggas like, bro, this is not it, bro. Like, your life is not over. If you don't, don't go to the league, bro, it's only 1%, 2% of niggas that's going, bro. We go to New Mexico and Mizzou. Check the statistics, bro. Niggas is not going to the league from them, bro. And not saying that can't change, but let's just be real. Like, and it's not looking good for none of y'all right now. I wouldn't be sitting here talking to y'all about this shit. So it's just like, bro, life goes on, bro. Like, there's so, especially nowadays. Like, bro, I'm making a fucking YouTube video right now, bro. Like, 
you can do that. It's so many options to make money besides just getting a standard nine to five. Or, oh my God, I need a degree to do X, Y, and Z. Degrees don't even get you entry level jobs no more all the time, bro. Like back then, that should have put you at manager, damn near CEO, supervisor. Like that's not the case no more for everything. You can do that at a warehouse off rip right now from college, but that's not going to be the case everywhere you go. So I'm just telling people, like, bro, this shit not it. Like, it's bigger shit than this. Like, y'all got to open your brains up a little bit more because I don't know, bro. I just hate seeing that shit, bro. And I know that once a lot of people graduate, even in my grade, bro, like, since I dropped out, I think my class graduates, like, next spring or some shit like that. This shit not over with. And I feel like it's going to be a wave of depression, bro, because everybody finna sit there and have a fucking identity crisis about this shit, bro, because it's like... I've been doing this shit for so fucking long. I can't blame you or be mad at you for that shit, but the shit is not it. This is not over with. This is not a rap, bro. Like, look at where we look, what we live in, bro. It's 2022. It's so much shit to do to make money, bro. And I know I keep saying that, but I really want y'all to understand that shit because it's a fact. I don't know, man. It's just like came back home, start working and shit like that. And, I, and that's another thing, too. Getting money, like. Bro, I feel you like that $1,500, $1,700 stipend check a month. That shit is amazing fucking money. If your parents is paying for everything, bro. I got car note. I got phone bill. I got to get myself clothes. I got to get myself groceries. Like, New Mexico wasn't feeding us no good food or... Nigga, we was getting food that was edible. Like, that shit wasn't nothing you want to sit there and eat, though. So, got to get groceries. You got to get clothes. Nobody told me to get a fucking dog, but shit, I'm doing all this shit by myself anyway. Like, I need me a little companion. I want an animal, bro. Hella niggas in college get dogs and shit, animals, whatever. Bad fucking decision, I'll say that. You're going to be gone, hellas, and X, Y, and Z. Don't get a big dog. You can get a dog, bro. But, so, me getting that check a month, after I break all that shit down and pay my rent and pay X, Y, and Z, I got like 400 a month, bro. And me living now is like, bro, how the fuck I'm living on $400 a month, bro? Really trying to make that shit stretch and hurt and got to sell clothes, sell shoes you don't want to sell. Do shit you don't really be wanting to do just because you trying to make ends meet type shit. So I got home, started working and shit like that, bro. And honestly, I ain't gonna lie. Like, this shit has been great, bro. I started making clothes, clothing brand been going crazy. I'm going to make another video later just talking about, like, what I've been on now. But as far as the why I dropped out, like, that's the story, bro. I just don't have a, didn't have a passion, didn't have a love for the shit no more. And honestly, like, me fucking up my shoulder, my AC joint, and my fucking labrum in my shoulder kept having hamstring injuries. I can't bend my fucking finger no more, bro. Like, shit just... And I know that's little shit, bro, but nigga, that shit fucks with me still. Like, my shit's hurting, bro. And just all the problems that come with that shit, getting hella concussions all the time, just, like, fucked up ass shit that I'm just, like, now living, bro. It's like, bro, it's shit bigger than that. And I'm, I'm glad I made the decision, bro. Like, I'm genuinely happy with this shit, bro. Like, this shit, and I really just start, like, I feel like it's the perfect time to get into the shit that I'm doing, bro, but... I'm going to say that shit for another video, bro. I told y'all, you know, pretty much why I dropped out. Um, if you got questions about anything as far as how all that shit go, shit, say something in the comments, man. It's your boy CJ. It's been a long motherfucking video. I didn't drop what I was using as my mic, so that audio probably going to sound like shit. But, man, look. Just be great, bro. The end, everything that ends, one chapter that ends, bro, is not the fucking end of everything. Trust me, bro. Trust me. Especially nowadays, bro. But yeah, man, it's your boy CJ, and I'm out. You dig? Let's do it.